Welcome back to Swans Cast, then everyone. So, uh, on a day today where maybe you could say officially the new season does start, uh, the fixture list for the 2021 2022 season has been revealed for all the clubs, obviously, in the Football League. Um, I'm joined with Lee today, which is kind of a quick reaction to the list, see any highlights, maybe talk about the start, the end, all that sort of stuff, and a little bit of a bonus as well. The Carabao Cup draw was also made today, so we get to find out who we're going to face in the first round. So, starting off then, um, I just want to make a note of uh, a little bit of a clarification that has been released with the fixture lists, which is a bit weird. I find it a little bit interesting. Um, I want to see if anything actually comes of it, because I think it'll be riots, to be honest. It's going to be a lot of... uh, Not for us, it's it's kind of like get the popcorn out and have a watch what's going to happen for us, but Derby County fans and Wickham Wanderers fans don't really know what league they're playing in next year. What do you make of that situation? Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? I'd be very, very surprised if they actually go ahead and say, yeah, you've got to swap leagues. I don't see it happening. I don't think they've, they've ever really enforced it properly, they? apart from like sort of points deductions. I can't see them doing it. But like, how do you prepare? There's obviously like financial connotations, isn't there, being in two different leagues. Like if if Wickham were to stay up, then obviously they can you know look at different you know different transfers. And same with with Derby as well. So I don't I don't know how you can do it now. And you know the two teams are sort of left in limbo. They'll have to make a decision soon. But I I can't see them doing it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> also, like, you got the Derby County players, a lot of them probably maybe normally would leave with, if they got relegated, and then the whole, like, wage structure based on what league they're in. Um, yeah, there's, you've got, like... Signing players for League One, whereas they might be able to get better players if they're in the championship. It's a bit complicated. They need to make a decision soon, while there's still time to prepare. If it is going to be a change... I'd be surprised because it's a massive like statement to make, and I just feel like they, no, unless they literally what? have to make an example. But then you'll have people questioning like why stuff wasn't done earlier, why it's got to this stage, why it's taken this long, why other clubs haven't had the same treatment. It just opens a can of worms a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I, there's no way they can do it now. I, like I said, I'd be very surprised if they did. Imagine they just did it now. I mean, derby players may have relegation clauses in their contract, so if they yeah. go down. Um, imagine that. Like they would lose, they might lose like a chunk of their squad a couple of weeks before the season starts. But don't you think it's a bit weird that um, they've done it in the, like they've done it this way, where they've said like there's two fixture lists for for Derby and Wickham. Like they've done an alternate fixture list. Why go through that effort if if it's not even a consideration? It just seems a bit yeah, odd. It's, it's it is stupid. That's that's probably their like. Um, <sighs> That's probably how they are dealing with it, isn't it? Rather than actually, it. Well, they're sort of the, saying the like, "Oh, we could, we could do this. Like, we could just yeah. swap you." They're not going to do it. Like again, we we'll probably play this back now when yeah, they've done it. I was going to say, a couple of weeks time now, guys. If this happens, we'll just get we'll get this all over Twitter and social media. Or oh, they're never going to do oh. it, and then you can eat them alive. That's fine. It's you know, you know what it, you know what it's like though with these EF. I don't need, like someone's going to have to explain these like FFP things to me because they never act on them. Not in not in a very serious way, anyway. That that is just their threat, isn't yeah, like it? Stoke you know, losing made like fifty it, million but... last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, that's sustainable, of course. Yeah, exactly. People question the way that we operate and and stuff, but at least we're not in that situation. I think that's something that we can yeah. uh, be happy about um, without going into details. But um, <clears throat> okay, let's go oh, into the. Uh... Before we move on, I was going to say Stoke signed uh, Ben Wilmot, didn't they? Or he's, I saw he was linked. I've not seen, but I'm sure we'll yeah, look apparently. into stuff like that with some uh, transfer episodes coming up in the next couple of weeks after the Euros, probably. Yeah. Um, okay, so looking into the fixture list then. So August, <clears throat> starting, unfortunately, with an away game. Although, like, I mean, I say unfortunately... Normally, it's nice to start at home, isn't it? So you get a nice game. Not a nice game, but like... You want to win your home game, the first game of the season, get off to a good start, all that. However, because you haven't been away for like so long, if we are allowed to travel by Saturday, August the seventh, maybe an away game would be a nice, nice day out. But I don't know what the rules are going to be. Um, I had an email off the 
Swans about a season ticket, and they were saying it's like it's, they sort of touched on it was likely to be like a ballot system for the first couple of home games, I think, because that's home yeah, games. I doubt we'll have full yeah, I doubt we'll have full stadiums by the seventh of August, so I can't yeah. see them allowing away know. fans. I don't know when I'll be going if it's ballot. Um, it's hard for me to get tickets to run work sometimes. Like I just probably wouldn't even bother trying until it's back to a little bit of normality where you can just walk, you know, go down. And go. Um, at least, at least, so I expect we will see some football this season. Yeah. At least, it probably won't be another full season without going. Which is uh, we need to get some good. press links to get in the press box and do some live streams from the uh, from the stands. Ah, oh, that'd be nice. Get a podcast in from the lib. Um, oh, maybe one actually, day. I went. I went back to the lib the other day to watch the. Oh, we'll talk about that in the Euros one. But I went to the lib to watch the the Wales Italy game. They did a thing in the hospitality, which was quite good. It's decent. Big um, screen. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds good. They should have done that for like a uh, playoff final as well. Anyway, yeah. back to the fixture list. So Blackburn Rovers away on Saturday, August 7th. And then we've got Sheffield United at home. Quite similar to like the first year we came down. We had them right at the start. Uh, Stoke City at home. First Tuesday game, August the 17th. And then two away games, Bristol City and Preston North End. That's the first five games they're all in August. How are you feeling about that start? I think it's quite um it could have been a lot worse. I think it's I think it's a bit of a naughty start to be honest, because like Blackburn away well it isn't a noisy game, is it? But Blackburn away bit of a hard one. They've sort of been floating outside the playoffs in the last couple of seasons and then you've got <clears throat> Sheffield United obviously just come down, new manager. Um, as our first home game, that's going to be hard. Stoke, yeah. always, always. Yeah, but I think if you're based off this season and form this season, Stoke at home, you've got to look to be winning that. I think the one that's difficult is Sheffield. Blackburn away is not easy, don't get me wrong. But if we're going to bounce off this season and continue where we left off, we've got to be looking at at least three wins in that period. Early oh, to say that. Wins. I think it's early to say that. But if, if you want to get off to a good start and, and put a marker down and carry on, improving that's what we've got to be aiming for for me oh yeah yeah definitely we've got to we've got to be looking at that but i think it's um yeah it's a bit of a hard start i think though three away games in there and in the two home games are stoke and sheffield united so yeah. it's uh it is, it is a bit of a tough start but uh yeah well like you said if we're going to challenge again then we got to we got to pick up uh we've got to pick up points there i think yeah i think though uh as well as much as we're not gonna we're not gonna go through every game on your in order but um, September, I've just noticed. They've got Fulham, which is the last game on Wednesday, the 29th. But the other four, Hull City, Millwall, Luton Town and Huddersfield. That's, uh, that's a decent month. Like, if we if you say we've got a bit of a tough start, I just think there's opportunity to go on a decent run. Yeah, I was just, think, I, I just thinking, though, we're always, we're always rubbish in September after the first international break, can we? We're always half hit a bit of bad form. Well, we have in recent seasons anyway, it seems like. Yeah, we'll I start mean, well and then... We're coming back from the internationals, internationals with two home games against Hull and Middle and Millwall. Hull just yeah. come up, so... Well, I mean, we haven't always done well against the promoted teams either. But we'll see. Look, it's, it's a long way away, this is. Um, that, that one stinks, though, doesn't it? Of like us. Yeah. That's like after the first international break, Hull promoted team at home. We always come back slow after the first one. Yeah, that's true. Hull Bank, Hull Bank are on that one. Um, if we do manage to maintain our form and are in the same situation this season as, or next season as we were this season, are we even challenging maybe for promotion automatics this season? Look, that's all theorising. We might even be fighting relegation. What I'm trying to say is, sometimes the last couple of games of the season are just as important. We are going to end the season with a home tie against Millsborough, then a an, an away tie against Nottingham Forest, and then the last match is a home tie against QPR. I think it's not as bad as what we had this season, like Watford in the last game. I mean, look, maybe it is. Maybe QPR will be top, but I assume, I'm assuming they're not going to be. And a home tie against QPR, you know, it's not awful if we need something from that game. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a winnable game. That is, we've got a twelve, got a, a tidy last sort of six games. I think nice little run in there. Tidy last um, six, yeah, but there's a big one before that. But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the, okay, so Boxing Day is another one that people like to highlight. So this year on Boxing Day, we're not going to be at home, which is, you know, I guess, the swings and roundabouts in it, but away at Millwall. So I thought they usually try and keep the Boxing Day one travel distance no, as low as possible. We're always, yeah, but we're always in London, aren't we, Boxing Day usually, or Red in it usually is. Or one of the like Birmingham based teams. That's what we usually have over the Christmas period because we've got Luton. <clears throat> yeah, but that's what I'm home, saying. Like travelling, yeah. I thought like Birmingham is one of the closest, isn't it? I thought they'd try and keep the travelling down. Yeah, they do, but we were like yeah, for some reason we always have like London based teams around Christmas. It is easy to get it's to London. It's just up the end for, isn't it? Swansea. <clears throat> yeah, it is they always do it. Because if you look like December we've got three games in a row, QPR away, Millwall away, Luton home, and then Fulham home. So the four games over Christmas are all London-based teams. Yeah. Well, so yeah, New Year, New Year's Day is following my home. Um, yeah. Bill Wall, I mean, if you want to, if you're going to Boxing Day, if you're allowed to go, then, uh, I mean, I do a, like a feisty one. I do like a, I do like an away day Boxing Day. I usually try and pinpoint that every year to do a Boxing Day away day. Yeah. Um, it's been a while now. Well, who who knows what the situation will be in in December? I mean, it's so up and down. You just can't call that right now. Yeah. But the other one that everyone's going to be looking at then, double legger, Cardiff City. So I think it's the the biggest gap between the derbies since we've uh, come since we've been in the championship together since we got relegated. So we're playing the first leg. We're at home first, which I think I'm happy with that. But uh. At home first, Saturday, October the 16th. And then the away leg is right towards the end of the season, in April. In busy April, uh, with six games in April. So it starts off April, so it's uh, Saturday, April the 2nd. However, that's after an international break. Uh, that's fair enough. So I don't know if that is a good thing. Actually, looking at the fixtures, they both are. They're both the first game after international break. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the first one is as well, yeah. Well, better than uh, before. Like last time, wasn't it our last game before the international break when we lost the home game? And we had about two weeks to stew on it. Yeah, but I'm just saying, because you said just now, but us are now form after international breaks. Yeah, true. So, I mean, are we going to have to snap out of this season if we want to keep the bragging rights? Mm, yeah. I didn't. I mean, I've got the stats in front of me for last year. It doesn't feel like everyone was bad. I think it, we're just generalising over the last, like, you know, five, yeah, ten years, I guess. It's always been. A it's bit. usually just the first one, isn't it? The first international break when we come back in September, we usually don't. Yeah, we do have a well flying start that. of the season and then come back from that, and it's like that period is crap. And then it's like you solidify then as a just outside the playoffs so or keeping in the playoffs as it's been. Yeah. Um, Okay, any highlights on on there that you're looking forward to? Uh, mine, I think we well, we both are looking forward to the opportunity potentially of Blackpool away. I think that'll be a good day out, but I'm sure a lot of people agree with that. Yeah, Blackpool definitely the big away day this year. I think definitely, and it's on a weekend. I was worried that it was going to because we've had a few midweek away games against Blackpool, which is impossible. But yeah, that'll be a good weekend, and uh, like like we've got a few birthdays in that area of me so that like a, a full weekend yeah. away will be good there March the I also 12th look, uh, the John, the John yeah. said it's around his birthdays and there's two weeks after mine so it's, yeah uh, although yeah so it's a, be a good good weekend that would be like two weeks after potential stag too as well so <laughs> <laughs> yeah see what money's like <laughs> yeah we're gonna catch up. another one I usually look forward to as well is Borough away or anything up north because we're ties up there Usually go away for a weekend up the north. Yeah, Middlesbrough's on a weekend, which is good. Um, December actually, 4th. I'd like to do that one again because we had the tickets for Middlesbrough and we were travelling up when they stopped for Paul. It was that and we had Middlesbrough away. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that one I'm looking forward to. I would like to go to Bristol City. I did manage to go last time when you guys went. So, Bristol mm. City away, um, which is one of the early ones, though. So not hopeful of that. I know, I was gutted with that, because I think like we probably won't have away fans for the early ones, and Brussels is always a good one. Um, but otherwise, I, I know, in terms of driving distance for us, because we tend to drive up to me when we go, one of the Birmingham ones is the go-to that we usually do, so, well, I guess there's only 
is West Brom and Birmingham now, isn't it? Really. Um, uh, Col- Coventry as well. Yeah, Col- Coventry's only run to co- that, that could be the one then because we've been to the other two. So Coventry could be looking at that. And then maybe QPR away as well. That's that's not. I've never been to Loftus Road. so. Oh, like bloody hell, I've been to Loftus Road. That's what a tin shed. <laughs> I, went to, I went on, like I said, about Boxing Day away trips. I went Boxing Day um, the year we got promoted and they absolutely destroyed us 4 0 and Tarapt, like, run the show and it was about minus 10. Back when Tarapt was good. Yeah, yeah that was so a fun trip. Coventry away is Tuesday, November the tw- uh, 2nd. QPR away is. I'm just trying to find. Can Early you see doors. QPR away? Oh, there it is. Um, Saturday, oh, December the 16th. Um, yeah, so yeah. like week before Christmas. Be a good one, actually. Yeah, if I can get it off work. Probably not happening. It's Saturday. Is it Saturday? Yeah. Saturday, yeah. yeah sure, I can swindle that into a, a London weekend, Christmas London weekend. Uh, I, I mean. If I get the Saturday off before Christmas, then I must have done something very good in work. <laughs> you must have been sacked. <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't say too much. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see if we actually get to any. I mean, I'm a bit cautious, without being the down, uh, a downer on this, I'm a bit cautious about the winter ones because I feel like stuff will pick back up and maybe... It'll be tighter over winter and whatever, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Just make sure so. you get your vaccines, I guess, if you want to go to away games, because it seems like you might have to have them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, but yeah, on a different topic altogether, I'm going to Wimbledon next week for the day, and oh my God, it's like you've got to have a test and like, like everything, really? loads of rules. Yeah, loads and loads of rules are ongoing. It's madness. What? Well, like there, when you get there, they're going to give you a test. No, you've got to have like a lateral flow test before you go within 48 hours. Um, or show evidence of two vaccines. Um, you can't like transfer your tickets and stuff like that. It's just there's, there's loads of rules on it. It's crazy. There's a big long list and an email of stuff that you have to do before you go. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then you see them scenes from that summit the other day down in Cornwall and... But yeah, let's not get into politics. Yeah. Um, yeah. As long as the strawberries are wimbled, then it'll be all right, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, I can take out a mortgage now just to get some uh, some strawberries. Just take your own panet with you. Get a good test goes on the way up. <laughs> Two pounds. And then uh, get some cream for a quid bargain. Yeah, job done. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's probably it for this video. It was only meant to be a quick one. We're going to go straight into a uh, second week of our Euros uh, talk, which again, won't be too long. I think we covered most of it in the first one, the way the fixture has gone there. But if you didn't catch it, we have released a bit of a different video. Um, obviously, we've got the summer to try out some new things, but we did some football manager, me and my, me and Alid. Uh, we did like a fantasy draft. So basically, if you like your fantasy football, it's essentially a game of fantasy football, but you can pick anyone and then you just uh, play a game against each other in like a mini league. So we set the target of we both had to create a team with a budget of past and present Swansea players that are still in the game, and then see who came out on top. So if you want to check that out, I'll uh, you know that will be linked. So check that out. Otherwise, leave a like on the video. It helps us grow as a channel. Really appreciate everyone's support. Let us know in the comments what you think with the fixture list. What you're looking forward to. When you think you'll get back into a stadium. Um, and otherwise, we shall catch you in the next video. So see you later. See you soon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video to click the like button to help us grow. To keep up to date with all of our new uploads, hit the subscribe button and push the bell to ensure you are notified of all of our new videos. As always, engage in the comments and let us know your opinions on what we discussed today. And if you want to support us directly, check out our new merch where you can find some awesome sponsor-related t-shirts.